Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Effective Resume Thursday. It is June 2nd, 2022. Please note this event is being recorded. It's currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, you give consent for your name and picture to appear. Please note that any comments you put in the Zoom chat window will not appear in the recording. For those people on Zoom, if you'd like to use the chat box to enter any questions, you're welcome to do so. You're also welcome to bring your personal information if you'd like to be able to connect with other people uh, and network with other people who are on the uh, session today. For those people watching on Facebook, if you have any questions, please just put your comments and questions into the comment field. We are monitoring that feed and we'll be sure to get those questions answered for you. We are gonna review one or two resumes today live at the end of the session. If you'd like to submit your resume, you may do so be using the chat box for those on Zoom. But uh, I would ask that you please delete your header information uh, before you send your resume because your information, because that resume will show up on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, and if you don't, if you're okay posting your personal information, that's fine. But if you don't want to show it, you're also welcome to do that before you send in your resume. So we will review a couple of resumes at the end of the session if anybody sends one in. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I started a website called careerdfw.org uh, to help those who are unemployed in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In 2012, I started a second website, careerusa.org, to help those around the United States. I have written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search That You May Not Know. It is available on Amazon. Since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. The group's been around since the late 1990s, and I'll tell you about our upcoming program at the end of this session that we have coming up tomorrow. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team. You've got to remember your resume and your LinkedIn profile will not get you a job. It only gets you a phone call. How well you practice your interviewing skills is what's going to get you your next job. So if you'd like to have a free interview or find out more about that, just reach out to dallaspitcrew.com and uh, it would be a web page there with all the information you need to know. Also, since COVID started, uh, we've put over 500 workshops have been put on in the last two years. So I think we're at 503 or 504 today. So, you know, thank you for being with us if you've been part of our past workshops. Oh, there's the DallasPitCrew.com information. All right, uh, let me switch over to our presentation here. So our agenda day, we're going to talk about the ATS system. We're going to talk about a one-page bio. We're going to talk about a master resume. We're going to talk about the key components of a resume. And then if anybody sends in their resume, we'll take a look at it at the end of the session. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, I thought, some basic resume writing rules that will put you ahead of the competition. Uh, the source is uh, from the manager of uh, Coach Connect at the Muse, which is a website for career research. So uh, just, these are just some suggestions that uh, Jody Porzrinski has uh, submitted to everybody. Number one, you've got to avoid spelling or grammatical errors. Recruiters or you know uh, hiring managers, as soon as they see a mistake, boom, they're on to the next resume. Because you got to remember, they've got ten or you know they've got a pile of resumes in front of them or on the screen, and as soon as they see a mistake, boom, they're on the next one. They're on the next one. They're on to the next one. So please just consider, uh, you know, double check your spelling, double check grammatical errors, and we'll talk more about that in just a second. Be sure to watch your tenses. We'll talk about this also. You've got to make sure that anything you did in the past at a past job has a past tense. If you're sending your resume into a person, into a hiring manager, into a somebody at HR, and you have a direct email, I always recommend, and they rec Jody recommends too, that you send it as a PDF file. The reason for that is it will always show up on their end exactly as you meant to send it. When you don't send it that way, and if you send a Word document, when I open up, if you were to send me your resume in a Word document and I open it up, there's a good chance that 
the tabs are going to be off. Things will be different because my printer is probably different than your printer. And whatever your default printer is, is what causes things to sort of lay out on the screen correctly. So that's why it's a good idea to send your resume as a PDF file whenever possible. You want to make sure your resume is easy to read. You want white space. White space is very, very important. You want to quantify as much as you can, okay? You've got to have results. Don't make your resume read like a job description. Tell me what it is, what successes you've had doing the things that you needed to do because I'm looking to hire somebody who can maybe do the same thing that you've done in the past if you show me some results. You want to name drop and title drop. So what they're talking about here is Name drop is making sure that your job title matches the job title that they're talking about. If for some reason that, you know, you were the chief people person and you're applying for a uh, director of talent acquisition or something, in, you know, you can say your past job was chief people person, but in parentheses put director of talent acquisition so that the, the search engine will go and find you. Use your judgment when it comes to being create being create uh, with when it comes to creativity. Um, you know the best example of this is my daughter is a UX designer. So when she lost her job at IBM, they laid over they laid off like twenty five thousand people. She was one. She was in the wrong building. They just everybody in her particular building didn't matter what you did, you were gone. So uh, when she got laid off being a creative artistic person, she created this very artsy resume. Well, of course she wouldn't listen to dad. And luckily they gave her right management and the resume that she finally got her next job with was a resume that right management sort of forced her to use and sort of come up with, which is what we're gonna talk about later today. You don't need to list everything you've done. Uh, we'll talk about a master resume. It's important that if you're sending a, a resume in, that your resume matches what's in the job description, okay? So if somebody sends, you know, you want to make sure that you're making it easy for the person reading your resume, matching it to the job description to make it easy. So you don't have to list everything you've done. You want to be sure to think about the person reading your resume. Who is it that's reading your resume? <clears throat> Are they going to understand all the little abbreviations that you have, or do you spell out your abbreviations? Is it uh, going to be the hiring manager who's actually getting your resume, or is it somebody in HR, maybe some 22-year-old who just graduated college, who really isn't sure what a, a programming manager does, but has been given a job description and says, hey, look for somebody who does the same thing. So you just need to sort of be very, very careful with what, you know, what those things are. And then think about the specific job you're applying to. You've got to customize your resume. Very, very, very important because when you send a generic resume, you're not making it easy for somebody to say what it is you do. So you want to be sure you customize your resume to what's in the job description. Here's some guidance from the Professional Association of Resume Writer and Career Coaches. Number one, be sure to make your resume easy to read. You want it to be free from spelling, punctuation, and grammatical errors. We've talked about that. Be sure to spell out any acronyms. All right, if you've got, if you, you know, anything that's got an abbreviation, the first time you use it, you should always be sure to spell it out the first time, and then in parentheses, put the abbreviation, and then you can use the abbreviation later on in your job description. Be sure to focus on skills related to the target jo job. So once again, we're talking about, you're gonna tell them in your resume what it is you've done specifically to this job, uh, to the job application. You wanna be sure to include qualitative and quantitative accomplishments. Results sell. We'll talk about more about that in just a second. And no pictures, no graphics, no underlines, no boxes for an ATS resume. When you submit a, a resume to an ATS system, you have to remember there's well over a hundred different ATS systems out there. Every ATS system does things a little bit differently. Uh, many ATS systems will not handle graphics, pictures. No, they won't know how to handle an underline. Um, so just be very, very careful. No headers, no footers, 
um, just, just be aware of those kinds of things. All right, so let's talk about the resume versus a one-page bio. So we're here to talk about effective resumes today, but I think a very important tool for everybody is to have a bio. Now, this used to be something that executives used only, but nowadays, I think everybody should have a one-page bio. What's the difference? A resume signals that you're looking for a job. A bio can be used in many different situations with a lot less risk. So if you're networking with somebody, yes, you may be looking for a job, but if you're networking with somebody to find out, you know, just to let them know who you are, a one-page bio can be extremely, extremely effective. Any networking event, you should send the person the bio beforehand so they know who it is, what's going on. A resume focuses on work history detail and credentials. A bio focuses on major accomplishments and expertise. A resume is primarily a job search tool. A bio is a multi-purpose tool. You can use it in lots of different situations. If you're gonna be speaking in front of a group, you can send a one-page bio. If you're networking with somebody, you send a one-page bio. In many instances, I think you should be sending a one-page bio when you initially uh, see a job that you're interested in, unless they specifically ask for a resume. Because until you've talked to that person, do you really know what it is they're looking for? All right, so here's one sample uh, bio that's on here. Um, you can see on here on the right hand side, uh, uh, left hand side, you do put a picture on your bio. It should be the same picture you have on LinkedIn. It should be a professional looking picture. You know, we pictures is another another whole topic about that. You're briefly going to talk about your background about your professional biography. You're gonna list your education, contact information, and then some professional achievements and successes. So this is one way to do a bio. Another way to do a bio is instead of horizontally, you can do a vert vertical and horizontally. The difference here on this bio is that this one talks about, uh, it has target functions. You see your target functions, whoops. It has target functions and target companies listed. Sometimes this is considered a marketing plan because you know, you've probably heard the term bios, marketing plans. To me, they're sort of interchangeable. The difference is a marketing plan, you list companies that you're interested in. Well, this is fine if you're sending this to friends, but this is not good if you're sending it to a company, you're trying to network into a company because let's say you're trying to, uh, you know, target, uh, uh, let's say Kroger. Well, Kroger is the last one on that target company. Uh, and you, you send this to somebody who works at Kroger, they're going to go, well, wait, you've got nine other companies listed before Kroger's. Are we not your most important target company? So personally, I don't think you should list, I mean, you need to have a list of target companies, but don't list the companies on there. And if you do do that, be sure that the company that you're sending this to, they're listed first. Very, very important. Uh, let me put both of these. I've got both of these samples. I can put these in the chat window. So let me drop these in the chat window for you. Let's see here. Okay, so I just sent, uh, put both those in the thing. If for some reason you can't download these, I will be glad to send these to you. I'll give you an email address at the end of this presentation that you can do that with. So we talk about the one-page bio. I think there's a great book out there about one-page bios. It's written by Minna Brown. It's called B Sharp. You want to make sure you get the second edition. It's got the little lines on both sides. You'll see the little lines here between first edition and second edition. It's on Amazon. 15 to 17 bucks. I think it's a great book. The first half of the book talks about how to do your introduction. The second half of the book, it's got like 30 different bios in it. I think it's just a wonderful book to, if, if you're not sure how to do a bio, you can also just go out on Google and, you know, Google one page bios and you'll get plenty of samples that are out there. Here you see Minna's uh, bio over here on the right hand side. I think that's a little bit busy for a job seeker. It's a little too much information, but she does this because she's an executive coach. She's a public speaker. So, uh, you know, just sort of be aware of that. 
In fact, Minna Brown will be speaking to the North Dallas Career Focus Group on June 24th. So it'll be coming up if you want to see her presentation on uh, the one page bio, you can join us on June 24th. All right, let's talk about a master resume. Your master resume, you want to make your job search easy. What, I mean, I have a file folder that has all copy, a hard copy of my resumes since I first started looking for a job back in the 1980s. And, you know, what I should do and what I have done fairly recently is I've put together a master resume. And it includes every job I've ever had since high school or since college and on. Uh, it includes uh, any kind of special workshops, any kind of less, any career workshops I've been to, any kind of uh, jobs, uh, career jobs that I've had. It lists all the details and dates. Everyone has eight, 10, 12 bullet points with success stories on it so that when I see a job description, I can go and take that master resume, save it as however my naming co uh, common, however I name resumes to keep track of things. And then I start eliminating everything over that long 10, 12, 14 page resume and cut it down to only what they're looking for in the job description. Okay. I talk about this all the time. You only want to tell them what it is they're looking for because you want to make it easy for them to see that match. Okay, so take your master resume. Once you build it, then you never have to think about, oh yeah, I used to do that back when I worked at so-and-so. So that's why I think a master res resume is a great tool. So let's talk about some characteristics of a good resume. The goal of a good resume is to make it easy for an ATS system and for job screeners to determine that you're a good match for the job. So number one, formatting. You've got to have your formatting. It's got to be very easy. We'll talk about that a little bit. You know, you want plenty of white space. You know, what should the overall length be? You know, if you're a recent graduate, only one or two jobs out of college, you probably can get it on a one page resume. Anything over that two pages is probably fine. If you're applying for it, three pages is okay. You know, if you go into third, as long as it all relates to what they're looking for, you don't want to fill it up with stuff that's unimportant. And um, if you're an academic or the U.S. government, they want everything. They want that master resume. They want to see everything you've ever done. So that's why if you already have your master resume, you're in really good shape if you're applying for an academic or the uh, government job. A question that always pops up is, how many years should I put on my resume? All right, so there are a couple of options here. And if you'd like to in the chat box, please put A, B, or C. For those watching on Facebook, just put it in the comment field, A, B, or C. So the first option is you show all of your experience, everything you've ever done. But of course, you eliminate what's not important that doesn't talk, they don't talk about in a job description. On um, the second option is you show only the most recent 10 to 15 years. All right, so you, if you've done anything past 10 to 15 years, you just eliminate that because you don't want to show people that you're maybe a little too experienced or too old. And then option C is you show details about the most recent 10 to 15 years plus a section called prior relevant experience. And I see we've got B's and C's on the chat window right now. Uh, my personal favorite is C. I think C is the way to go. Uh, and the reason being is that, oh, and David's changed his, um, all right, David, I see you've changed from B to C. The reason I like C is that if you talk about something that you've done and it's not listed on your resume, as in, oh, well, when I worked at IBM, and the job secret and the hiring manager is looking, I don't even see IBM as a job you ever had on here. They're going to be confused. But when you have that uh, section called prior relevant experience, that then gives uh, that can then gives the gives you permission to talk about what it is you've done at a prior job, even though you didn't give a lot of details about it. All right, uh, MB, you talk about what about gaps? We'll talk about that in just a second. So fonts for your resume. You, like I said, you want to make your fonts easy, easy, easy. So 
I like the first three fonts that are listed there, Arial, Calibri, or Tacoma, because they're easy to read. Times New Roman, Garamond, Calibri. The reason I'm sort of hesitant on those is because those have those little serifs, you know, the little extra pieces that are on the T, the extra pieces on the N. It's just not, if, if, if you were to, you know, save your resume in a couple different form and a couple different texts, you'll see that Calibri, Arial, uh, even Helvetica is a lot easier font to read because it's clean and easy. Uh, you want your font sizes to be 10, 11, or 12. Time New Roman, if you use that, needs to be 11 or 12 because that font's generally a little bit smaller. No fancy spots, no wingdings, you know, none of those comic sans, all those other fonts that you have options for. Keep it basic and simple because you've got to make it easy. You want to make sure your margins generally one inch top, bottom, right, and left because if it gets to the hiring manager, they're probably going to print it out if they're going to bring you in for an interview. And when they do that, they're going to be able to want to write some comments. So it's number one, a place for them to write comments on. But number two is if you cram all that information in and you have resume, your resume going from two tenths of an inch on the right to two tenths of an inch on the left, it is overwhelming. OK, people like white, white space is good. You've got to be careful about bullets. Bullets are okay. The bullets I have here that you see in front of each one of those, those are okay to use. All the ATS systems will recommend that. But some people use little check marks or little houses or telephones, or you can't use any of those kinds of things because a lot of ATS systems won't know how to handle that. Uh, you can use bold. You could underline, but I don't recommend it. I really don't recommend any italicized. It's definitely no shadows and no graphics, okay? So bullets and bold are probably okay. Underlining, maybe. I'm not a fan of the last three. Be sure not to use any text boxes, no headers, no footers, no templates, because there is uh, background characters that you don't see that are built into this that a lot of ATS systems will not handle. Most ATS systems, is, is, well, most ATS systems will not recognize a header or a footer. So how do we fill a gap? MB, MB gas about how a gap. So how do you do that? There are a couple different options. Number one, you can add a job title. You add a current job that says something about community leadership. Maybe you did some part-time consulting for somebody. Maybe you took some continuing education classes. And then underneath that, be sure to add a full a couple bullets to describe what you did. You know, consulting work that you may have done, even if it's pro bono, even if you didn't get paid for it with a nonprofit. That's why I always say recommend. That's why I always recommend about when you're looking for a job, volunteer to nonprofit. Help them out because you have skills that they probably need your help with. You know, any volunteer work, any leadership that you did, if you did it as a lead in a leadership role, something you've been doing. You know, if you received any certificates, list that. Be sure to put that on there because people are going to ask, so what have you been doing the last, you know, few months since you've been unemployed? Here's an example on a resume, and this is on our sample resume that I'll hand out or put out to everybody here shortly. So here's one, community leadership and consulting. Served as a panelist and a coach for the Dallas practice interview team to help job seekers with their interview skills. Also provided consulting services to a local nonprofit organization on how to prepare and conduct job interviews and how to evaluate candidates. So this happened to be for a church she was a member of, but instead of saying that and letting people know, you know, you don't want to talk, you know, things you don't talk about, religion and politics, that she just saw a local nonprofit organization, okay? So you can use your skills to do that. So that's a way that you can show how to fill a gap. So let's talk about the key components of a resume. Number one, you're gonna have a header. You're gonna have a summary statement. An optional thing is a key accomplishments, which really only salespeople would be using. You're then gonna show your professional experience, a prior relevant experience section. If you've had multiple jobs that you're not gonna show all the detail about. Education and then software skills. Unless you just recently got your MBA or unless you just recently graduated, 
your education needs to go at the bottom and software skills also need to go at the bottom. And we'll point that out here in just a second. So in the header, you wanna make sure you have your name and use the name you wanna be called. You don't have to put your legal name, okay? And if your name is hard to pronounce, in parentheses, spell your name out phonetically. Make it easy for the person to read your name. There are probably recruiters out there that if they see a hard to pronounce name, they may just go on to the next candidate because they don't, they're all gonna feel embarrassed because they're not sure how to pronounce your name, okay? So once again, make it easy for them. Uh, no con uh, your contact information, phone number, uh, city, state, zip code, you do not need a street address, okay? But you do wanna let people know what area, you know, that you're in the Metroplex, you're in the same area your email address and your LinkedIn profile, your LinkedIn email address, your LinkedIn address. Make sure that your email address and your LinkedIn address are not hyperlinks. When you usually type those in in Microsoft Word, it automatically turns them blue and puts the underline on it. Just right click on it and put on there remove hyperlink because some ATS systems, when they see uh, an email, or they see an email with the line underneath it, if there was a G or anything, a J that hangs down below the line and touches that line, it won't read it correctly. So that's why we say no underlines uh, on anything when you're applying on an ATS system. All right, a summary profile, summary and profile to go after uh, un underneath the header. So this person is applying as a business analyst, okay? So you want to put the job title. You want your job title to match. Now, if you've never done that role, you really can't list that you're a business analyst if you've never done that. So you've got to come up with a little bit different way to word things. But if you're a business analyst, be sure to put the job title that matches what it is they're, you're applying for. Then a three line, four lines max. I think three lines is all you should do because you want to make it easy for somebody to read things. If you notice the... Uh, those three lines, it starts out with an action verb, innovative, okay? Action verbs draw people in. So whenever you can, and we'll talk more about action verbs here in just a second, very, very important on uh, making sure your resume starts out with those kinds of things. So those three lines right there, most of those things come off the job description. And we'll show you the job description versus this resume here in just a second. Then underneath that, you're gonna have areas of expertise. I think nine is the best. You don't need 12 or 15. You don't need, you want to make sure that the areas of expertise are, are, are what the, uh, or what's off the job description, okay? So you're going to pull that information off the job description. Please make sure that if I were to ask you, what are your top three areas of expertise? that you don't say user interface design, developing test plans and improving processes. Because if those are your top three, they need to be the top three on the list or they need to be the top, the left three, okay? So if I was to interview you and when I interview people in the pit career, I'm gonna ask, say, oh, I see you have nine, you know, you got 12 bullet points here, nine bullet points. What are your top three? They better be the what's on the left or they better be on the very, very top. All right, the next section, a key accomplishment section. Now this is optional. This primarily would be for salespeople who've got to justify what they've done in, in relative things. So these are their accomplishments. They achieved 120% of a $1.5 million sales target in 2019, showing results, quantitative results. So if you've not been in sales, skip this section, keep on going. But also make sure that every, if you're in sales, every one of these bullet points need to also be underneath the job that you did it with so that I can find, all right, so tell me when you worked at IBM that you did this or that, okay? Make it easy so I can find it. Don't, you know, just don't leave them hanging up there by themselves. All right, so let's talk about professional experience. Number one, chronological resumes. You know, every once in a while crops up, somebody says, oh, I should do a functional resume. 99% of recruiters and hiring managers hate functional resumes. They want to see a chronological resume because they want to be able to look down and go, where did this person work? When did they work there? Okay. 
Number two, you want to make sure to use parallel verbs. Now, we've talked about that using proper tense. That was some of the suggestions at the very beginning of this presentation. And so what I'm talking about here is the very first, you know, you analyze, ensure. So the current job that this person has, they're using uh, current terms, OK? Analyze, ensure, ensure, serve. Those were uh, current tenses. Now, they do have one past one achieved, but this was for a something they did in the past when working for this job, OK? Very important. But every job you've had in the past, be sure that you use past tense. All those are underlined in blue. Engaged, translated, reduced, facilitated, saved, OK? So be sure your tenses are correct, because once again, Recruiters are really good about looking at this and going, whoop, this person messed up. I'm going to go to the next candidate who's taken the time to really, who knows what they're doing correctly. You probably should also include a one line description of a company. There are thousands and thousands of companies out there. I've been doing this since 2007, uh, and I've been in the career game since 2000, but since 2007, I've been sort of doing this full time. And there's not a Friday that goes by or when I look in some, you know, somebody's mentioning uh, companies in when they put their information in the chat window, it's like, I've never heard of that company. Where did that company come from? Who, where, what is that company? So even if it's a giant company like IBM or Campbell's Food or any of these big companies, put down what the company is. Just one line, tell me who it is, what do they do? Because that helps frame things. I also add a second line. Personally, I like to say who I report it to. And if I supervise anybody, supervised X number of employees. Because this then gives another frame of reference that I reported to the owner of the company and that I had three supervisors and 40 employees uh, who all reported to me. So it just it, it gives a recruiter a frame of reference of what it is you've done. Be sure to limit the number of bullet points on a job description. You know, the most current job, five is probably enough. The next one down, three or four. The next one underneath that, three or two or three. The farther back you go, the less you, you need to talk about. And most importantly, very, very, very important. I can't, you know, get over this. I can't mention this enough is focus on results. You do not want your resume to read like a job description. You want your resume to tell me quantitatively and qualitatively what you did because I have a problem. I need to hire somebody who can fix something. Oh, look at this person. This person did this at this other company and this were the results they had. I need those same results at my company. All right, under professional experience, be sure to limit your to five to six bullet points and the farther down you go, make it less. Bullet points should focus on results, we talked about that. Bullet points should not sound like a job description. I see so many resumes and so many LinkedIn profiles that look like a job description. Also, remember all the stuff we're talking about should also be on your LinkedIn profile. All right, so let's play the so what game. This is a great game I love to play. So here's somebody that put down uh, the original thing that they had on their resume was guided the next phase of grand evolution for a multimedia artist and manage film production and publishing. So I would ask, so what? No results. Tells me what you did, you got it the next phase, but it doesn't tell me what the results were. So when you ask, so what? Well, the person said, well, that's increased business opportunities, which led to 10 new commissions for my client. Ah, so there's, you came up with the result. So they reword, let's reword the uh, result. And here's what it now says, increased business opportunities, including 10 new commissions for my client based on developing a full social media and PR strategy. So by giving results, results sell. So for every, every bullet point list on your job, on your resume and on LinkedIn, you want to say, so what? If you've got a result and you can give me an answer of what you know, what you did, what the result was, great, move on to the next one. All right, what happens if I have multiple roles at one, one company? What should I do, all right? 
So what you want to do is you want to list the company name once with the full range of dates. Okay. So you can list company B, city, state, 2010 to 2014, and make sure that that date is over on the right-hand side. Then you're going to list the dates for each row underneath, right next to the job title that you had. Okay. So that'll make a big difference. So that'll then show that you had these two jobs. Now, if you had put those job dates over to the very right, I would have gone, oh, you're at this job for two years or at this job for two years. You know, that's fine. But sometimes if you get promoted in a year or something, it makes a big difference. So put the, your dates, if you had multiple dates at one company and show that if you have had multiple jobs at a company, show that you saw, saw the progression of you started out here, you got promoted to here, you started to do this. Very important. How do you handle companies that have changed names? Okay, there's two different ways to do this. Number one, you can give the name of the current company followed by the old name. XYZ Incorporation Incorporated, formerly ABC Company. So that's one way to do it. Oops. The other way to do it is you give the name of the old company first with possibly the name of the acquisition, as in, for example, ABC Company acquired by XYZ in 2008. Either way works. I believe you should take the most famous name. There was a gentleman a couple of years ago who used to work for Campbell Soup. Well, Campbell Soup was bought by another company. And then the company changed the name from Campbell Soup to another name to a third name. The plant that he worked at now had a third name, which I didn't know it was Campbell Soup. So which I said, use the most famous name, Campbell Soup acquired by and then list the name and, X, and the date. Because that way, everybody knows what Campbell Soup is. Nobody knows what company XYZ is, OK? So whatever the most famous name is, use that. Education and software skills, you want to list your degrees, OK? Degree, what the major was, city, uh, school, state. You don't need to list the date, OK? They'll figure it out. If they want to know it, they want to know it. Um, and then you want to list your software skills. You know, what skills do you have? Now, if you're, if you're an executive assistant, you need to list Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint. If you're a CFO, you really don't need to list Word and Excel and Outlook because quite frankly, if you're a CFO, you better know how to do those things. Otherwise you wouldn't be a CFO, okay? But be sure to list whatever other software skills, other software, uh, data, uh, objects that you've used, okay, like Access, Virtual Studio, stuff like that. If you do not have a degree, you may want to write something like this. School, city, state, major or area of concentration, and X number of hours, or X number of hours completed, due to complete in 2023, okay, to let people know that you're currently work doing that. Don't lie. Got to remember, remember what the uh, back Notre Dame hired a coach and he falsified when he on his resume he falsified the he, uh, that he had a degree from someplace that he didn't have a degree from. He didn't finish or something. And two weeks later, he got fired because he falsified his job application. Now, you got to remember, a resume is not a legal document. A resume. You want to tell the truth on a resume, but your job, when you fill out a job application, that is a legal document. So you've got to be sure you tell the truth. All right, so here is a resume on, I mean, a resume on the right-hand side, a job description on the left-hand side, okay? So what we want to do is you want to take a yellow highlighter or whatever highlighter color you love and start highlighting the important things, all right? So in this case, the person is looking for a business analyst. I'm going to be sure that I have business analyst is the head of my resume, and I put it in the very first paragraph of my summary statement. And then when they, they talk about business requirements, and I make sure that I talk about that. I'm going to be sure to talk about how I improve processes, and I'm going to put that under areas of expertise. I'm going to talk about cross-functional, how I deal with cross-functional teams. Be sure that that's listed there. I'm going to talk about the different skills they're looking about. They want agile, scrum, I'm going to mention those under my areas of expertise. Visual Studio, I put it under my software skills. You know, make sure I talk about that. 
multiple uh, let's say multiple sources, user manuals. I'm going to make sure I mention all those things that are common on both things. Uh, business process flowcharts, user interface design. I'm going to make sure that both of those are on there. So make sure that the keywords. This is what's going to be, get you a match. Okay, you're going to make it easy for the for the person filling out the or looking at the job description and looking at your resume to go, yeah, this person's got all these things that we're looking for. So remember, keywords are very, very important. You've got to match the keywords on a job description to the, get them on your resume, okay? And when you get them on your resume, be sure you add them to LinkedIn so that in the future, other people, will, if they happen to be searching for those keywords, will find you. You want to remember that resumes are scanned. I didn't show the slide, but resumes aren't, people don't sit down and read the resume word for word. Now the hiring manager may, but the initial recruiter, if they spend seven, eight, nine seconds on a resume, they're just scanning through quickly. Job title, couple jobs, uh, looking at education, and they go, okay, this one, this one goes to my, I'm gonna look at more detail pile. Oh, nope, this one trash. Nope, this one trash. This, oh, here's one that's okay. So you got to remember resume is the very first time to look at or scan. So you've got to make sure they're easy to read, they're inviting, and they can tell people, show some results. A resume will not get you a job, it only gets you a phone call. We've talked about that. You know, so if you want to practice your interviewing skills, once you get that phone call, you know, go to the DallasPitCrew.com. You never know why. They're calling you up. So when somebody calls you, you do get that phone call. Be sure to say, hey, thank you very much for calling. I'm really excited that you called. So can you tell me what was it about my resume that made you reach out? Now you know what's important to them. Now, if they said, oh, you just matched our job description, great. How can I help you? But you never know. I've heard of people who they happen to put something on their second page of their resume and th that key word sparked something. And the person calling said, well, it, you know, you mentioned the word um, X, Y, Z on your, on your resume. And, you know, I just, we haven't found a person that has that skill in a long time. You know, we'd like to talk with you about it. So, you know, you never know. Find out what's important to them. Very, very important. All right, uh, let's see here. Let me post in the chat window a couple resumes. Uh, let's see here. I will post. I'm actually going to post a couple of things. Here are some action verbs that will hopefully make you, uh, you know, you can use that will make your resume stand out. Uh, I've got, what else do I have here? Let's do the, here's the resume. And I also will send a T cover letter. I've got two T cover letters I will put here in the chat window. So you can go through and you can look at any one of those if you'd like. Uh, let me just see here, is there anything else? All right, well, I don't see anybody who has sent me a resume to look at. So I will stop here and go, do you have any questions? We can talk about whatever it is you'd like to talk about. Um, any questions you've got? Welcome to unmute your mic and let me know. Uh, Jeff, I have a resume. Do you want me to send it? How do you want me to get it to you? Uh, you can just, if you want, attach it uh, in the chat window. Click on that Perfect. little paper, and okay. you can attach it right there to me. And just send Perfect. it to me only. Okay, got it. Hold on. I'll, I'll get to there. Okay, we'll get to that. Anybody else have a question? If not, it's drink break for me. Hey, Jeff, it's Rosina. How are you today? Hi. Quick question. Um, one of our sessions before, and I don't think it was Resume Thursday, but one of the sessions, there was a handout that's been created for the 13 sessions. Um, the 13 sessions that Walt and um, Mark do, where it has the links to each of those sessions. Oh, you know, let me see if I've got that. Hold on. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, you know, I'm going to have to look and find because I don't have it titled that way. Um, I just remember that was a recent handout because I was going through my notes the other day and I was like, wait a minute, I hadn't requested that. But yeah, I don't know what it's called. All I know is it's. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't, I don't have, if I probably saved it, but I don't know, I don't call it that way. So I need to, I need to go look for it and stuff. If you want, uh, shoot me an email and I will be glad to, um, I'll find it this afternoon and get it to you if you want to send me an email. Okay. And do you want me to send it to the resume one or to yours? Uh, just send it to my email address. That'd be okay. great. Okay. okay, perfect. Thank you. David, were you able to connect, send your uh, resume? No, I, I got it and I reformatted it, you know, to not have my name on it. I'm oh. trying to paste it in the chat and it's not working. So I don't know why. Oh, uh, virtual pit intercruise recorded videos right there, Rosanna. Uh, Priya just posted that link. So perfect. Thank you, Priya. Thank you, Jeff. I've always liked Priya. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to paste it, and it just it's not working. So not working. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Right. Well, maybe next time you can uh, just send it to me directly. I guess I should have put the email today. They can pre-send it to me before the session started, but. Yeah. If you want to send it to me, I'll be glad to take a look and offer my advice after the session's over. Will do. All right. Let me uh, just share a few more things here and we'll get out of here. Um, if you'd like to, if you were not able to download any of these uh, handouts or whatever, uh, just send me an email to resume at careerdfw.org, resume at careerdfw.org, and I will get that. Let me know what you're looking for and I'll get those documents to you. Uh, Career DFW and Career USA, we're putting on training four days a week. Please join us tomorrow morning at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, uh, 9.30 Central Time in the morning. We're going to do open forum. We'll talk about whatever it is you want to talk about. If you've got questions about your job search, please bring them. You're welcome to offer, offer, offer your opinion throughout the session, and uh, to anybody else, is, uh, we'll do that. All right, on next Tuesday, Locke Otters will be with us for LinkedIn Tuesdays, 1 p.m. Central Time, how to use LinkedIn for job hunting strategies to get results. Next Wednesday, you'll be able to watch a practice interview, the practice interview team. If you'd like to schedule an interview, you can go to DallasPitCrew.com and be able to get a schedule and, and you know, find out information about how to do that. And then next Thursday at 1 o'clock, we will have a networking presentation uh, the talk will be by Charlie Zinger. He'll be sharing how he talks, what he thinks about networking and how you should do it. This session has been recorded. It will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel. On the Career USA YouTube channel, please click on playlist. Every video I upload goes into a different playlist. I'll have this video up there in a couple hours. Uh, instead of clicking on the video down below where you see that red arrow, click view full playlist, and then up will come a list of all the dates and topics and who the speaker was. You can go back and watch at your convenience. If you're not receiving emails about our workshops and you'd like to join the Career USA mailing list, please do so. Just send an email to Career USA, the plus sign subscribe at groups.io. You will not get spam, but what you will get is uh, the topic of the day, the title of the day, and most importantly, the Zoom link of the day to make it easy for you to be able to join us. Please remember, Career DFW, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We have no full or part-time employees. I'm a volunteer. I've never gotten paid to do any of this over the last 13 years. This is what I do to give back to everybody to help them out. So uh, please consider helping by making a donation when you do get your next job. So thank you for joining us today. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow morning. If not, have a great weekend and we will see you later. Thanks, Jeff.